As you all know, it's traditional in the Swiss Alps for the cowherds to yodel. Everybody knows that, right? In certain regions of Switzerland, there is a particular kind of yodel, and they call it the Chwereie. Chwereie is the kind of song that you would sing to call in the cows for milking in the evening, and it's very, very beautiful. But in time before time before time before time, the Swiss cowherds did not know about the Chwereie. In fact, they didn't know how to yodel at all. And this is the story how they learnt it. They say there was a young cowherd called Melk and he spent the summer on Bali's Alp in Haslital, tending to the cows, milking them and making cheese. And in the evening, when his work was done, Melk would step out of the cabin and put his hands to his mouth and call a prayer to all the saints to bless the meadows and the mountains and his cattle. And then it also holler a greeting to his sweetheart, Rezi, who was herding goats on the other side of the valley. It was a rather rough call, not particularly beautiful, but he thought Rezi liked it. And probably she did. Then Melk would turn in, climb up the little ladder to the hayloft and go to sleep. On this particular night, Melk woke with a start in the dark because he heard a fire crackle. That's odd, he thought. Who makes a fire in my dairy kitchen in the middle of the night? And he peeked through a crack in the door to the hayloft. And he saw three men in his dairy kitchen stoking the fire. Melk was ready to storm down and ask the men what their business was in his kitchen. But then he saw how big they were. And he thought, hmm, maybe I'll wait and see. Maybe they'll leave. The first of the three was a broad-shouldered giant with a red coat and a tangled red beard and a knobbly red nose, and he put a pot on the fire. The fire was being stoked by the second man, who was equally tall but very thin and wearing a green durkin like a huntsman and a satchel and a green hat, and he was putting logs onto the fire, making the flames dance and crackle. The third man was only a youth and very pale, with hair almost white and sky-blue eyes that glinted in the firelight. And he poured fresh milk into the pot. The red giant started stirring and the pale youth stepped out in front of the cabin and he started singing and milk had never heard anything as beautiful before. The song was like the wind in the trees and the summer rain. It was deep like the dark eyes of the calves. It was like the murmur of the brook and the lonely cry of the eagle. It was like a lover's sigh, like a call to battle, like a prayer. It was wonderful. And Melk's chest felt too tight for his heart when he heard it. Then the pale youth came back into the hut. The red giant was still stirring and the green giant took a bottle out of his satchel and poured blood-red rennet into the milk, which started to curdle. And the white youth took a horn, a long wound horn from the corner, went out in front of the cabin and started playing. The horn sounded loud and majestic, and low and tender. And Melk could hear all his cattle gathering to listen. It was like the wind in the trees and the summer's rain on the roof. It was like the murmur of the brook and the lonely cry of the eagle. It was like a lover's sigh and the call to battle, like a prayer. And Melk's eyes filled with tears. And he thought, Hör mal auf, oder ich fang mal which means, if he doesn't stop soon, he'll sure make me cry. When the pale youth came back in, the red giant was lifting the cheese out of the pot and he poured the remaining whey into three buckets and Melk gasped 
when he saw how in the first bucket the way turned blood red, and in the second bucket grass green, and in the third bucket snowy white. Come down you and choose your gift, the red giant called. And Melk froze, but then he caught the eye of the pale youth, who gave him a wink and an encouraging smile. And Melk took heart, and he climbed down the ladder, and he stood in front of the three giants. You will have to choose, the red giant said, from which bucket you want to drink, and which gift you want. If you drink from the red bucket, I will give you strength beyond reckoning. You will be the strongest man in all the valleys, and on all the mountains, nobody will defeat you. And you will be able to take whatever you please by force. In addition, I will give you 50 red cows. Melk was quite impressed. He thought, hmm, that wouldn't be the worst thing, would it? No, 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 said the green giant. Take the green bucket. Aren't you strong as an ox already? Don't you win all the wrestling matches already? What use is strength? And what use are fifty red cows? It only takes one cow to fall ill, and soon you will be taking the last cow to market. No, no, take my gift. Look. And the green giant opened his satchel and poured a river of gold coins onto Melk's table. And Melk's eyes grew wide, and greed pulled his hair. Imagine, he thought, I could build a big house and a hayloft and Resi could have as many ghosts as she wants and he was ready to extend his hand and drink from the green bucket. But then he remembered the white youth who was leaning on his horn and gazing into the fire as if dreaming. What is your gift? Melk asked. And the pale youth's cheeks flushed and his eye twinkled and he said... My gift is only very small. You can have my song and my voice and my horn. You will always be content. You won't need more. Whoever hears you sing will be happy. People and God will love you for it. And Melk didn't have to think long. He thought, if anything can melt a woman's heart, it's this song. If I can sing like that, Rezi will be my wife before the summer's over. He didn't say that to the three giants. What he said was, I'll have the white milk. I'm used to that. And he took a big swig out of the pale youth's bucket. Milk woke up in the morning in his hayloft with the birds singing. The three giants had gone. But the horn of the pale youth was still in the corner. And Melk took it and he went outside and he put it to his lips and started playing. And he played as beautifully as the pale youth had in the night. And all his cows came and stood around him and their bells mingled with his horn playing. And then he put his hands to his mouth and he started yodeling. And on the other side of the valley, Rezi listened in wonder. Very soon, she stood next to Milk, and they yodeled together. And that's how the Swiss cowherds learned the Chwiraye, and they've never forgotten since. <laughs>